Hi, I'm Dave. Welcome to Dave Takes It On News Review. Well, Ford cuts EV production yet again and admits it's looking at a Cybertruck like pickup. EV sales going through the roof. Starting to say there's no demand for EVs, while Volvo say what like a demand? Our orders are strong. Ford and Tesla admit they're losing their IRA $7,500 tax credit. France says no to Chinese cars and GM says all is on track to end ICE cars by 2035 despite closing down EV factories and halting new battery factories. So much more than this in this episode plus a rare maybe unique video of an EV charger actually blacking out live on camera. Don't miss that one. Well we open with Ford Motors after a very promising start which turned out to be just the early adopters who buy anything. And dealer forecourts are now jammed full of unsold F-150s and mach -E's. Ford finally admits it's not making compelling vehicles at competitive prices. Well, where have we heard that as a statement before? Oh yes, Tesla mission statement from 2006. Early adopters will buy anything at any price, we all know that. We've also all probably done it at one time, maybe with the latest phone or TV. But that's only about 5% of your eventual market. Majority of buyers are discerning, price driven buyers who compare models and makes and make up about 80% of your market. Ford now needs a massive effort, either in or out of EVs, and if in, they need to stage a full, serious attempt at winning back their buyers. If out, they need to tell their shareholders they'll be out of business within 10 years. All other legacy auto manufacturers, you can also take note Ford is not alone. So what is the new car market? Is it crashing? Are buyers returning to ice? Are EVs doing well or doomed? Well, the situation is compli complicated as always, but in summary, my research shows that all the ice manufacturers have been packing in the goodies and building bigger and better models for years, allowing them to jack up prices to ridiculous unsustainable levels, milking their loyal customers out of every penny or cent they can. And suddenly, a recession and high interest rates have killed off that tactic totally, and yet they refuse to return to the mass budget models that they are so good at because they've become used to the higher profit margins. Buyers have now stopped buying and are hanging on to their old cars for far longer. Sales are up slightly, but well below pre-pandemic levels, and now Legacy Auto re realising that it will actually not return. In fact, it is set to decline. They have simply killed off their own golden goose. EVs meanwhile are booming, sales are up all around the world, and the dedicated manufacturers are cashing in big time. Tesla, BYD, NEO, Zika. But the EV market has been seriously overhyped. Yeah, you heard it from me first. There was never going to be an instant switch from ICE to EV. Anyone believing that has not done any homework whatsoever. Well, fact one, the total production of new cars in the whole world in 2023 is hovering around the 100 million mark. Another fact, there are about 1.5 billion cars in the world. That's 1,500 million. So, in fact, we will manufacture about 15 million EVs in the whole world in 2023. Did anyone seriously expect we'd just scrap all our, all our old ICE cars and everyone would dash out to buy the EVs? That's crazy. Ice cars are going to be here for a long time, sadly. EV sales, are, EV sales are still growing nicely and they've captured around 15% of the total new car market. 15 million cars out of 100 million sold. Bang on target. EV sales will continue to grow to about 50% of the world market in new cars by 2035, 12 years from now. Yes, ice will still be huge in 2035, but the decline by then will be exponential, and in a further 12, 12 years after that, they're, they're almost all certainly gone. This is just older cars being scrapped at an average age of 14 years. And meanwhile, EVs are going to get cheaper, but with longer range, more features than the lowest spec ICE cars, which are going to be rising in price. Source from this is the SMMT. Tesla sales continue to grow, although the rate of growth is slowing. No, this does not mean the sales are slowing. Last year they sold about 1.4 million, this year they'll sell over 1.8 million. Is that what you call crashing EV sales? All that's slowing is the rate of growth, not the growth itself. Volvo, MG, BYD, Zika, they all show similar healthy sales and the steady growth, and that's going to continue. 
Just realise five times as many people buy a used car as a new car. So transition will take years yet. But it is underway and it's unstoppable. But even then, there'll be people like drug barons and warlords in the jungles who'll keep them going for decades. If you want to see how long you can keep a car going, just look at Cuba. They still drive round in 50s and 60s American classics. France has declared, like the USA, that Chinese cars will not qualify for any grants, subsidies or credits. Not a ban, just trying to fix the market. And it will fail. Chinese can subsidise their own exports and sell into France or America cheaper than homemade EVs, even with high tariffs. The only people who will suffer are the buyers. They will have to pay more. And the idea that tariffs protects jobs? Why do Ford and GM already manufacture in Mexico? They've done that for decades. Is that to save American jobs? Well, Tesla announced a massive 2 million pro car product recall. Well, in fact, they don't. All that's happened is that the autopilot system has been found to be too lenient on the attention the driver needs to pay to the road ahead while it is driving the car. Drivers already complain about having to look ahead, keep their eyes on the road or keep touching the steering wheel. This is a simple over-the-air update that most will not even know they got. Nobody needs to visit a service centre. What they will notice is they need to pay more attention. Now Ford, re Ford retains its safe, hallowed position as number one manufacturer in the whole world for vehicle recall. So let's see where Tesla is. Um, Chrysler, B BMW, Mercedes, Nissan, no, not yet. GM, Kia, oh, that was a surprise. Jaguar, no, no Tesla or any EV in the top 10. Or maybe next year. Now all you ice drivers who hammer us as green do-gooders living in a dream world, you've been joined by Andy Burnham, your saviour, who will fight this ridiculous ULES for you. Just have a look down this list published by GridServe, where the World Health Organisation has reported that 76% of all UK city centres are seriously above safe levels of pollutants. See if your city and the air you breathe each day is on this list. Many shoppers this year reported to be wary of going shopping in city centres because of the high pollution levels. They do not want to die prematurely. Thank you, Andy Burnham. I'm sure you will go and visit the families of every one of those who dies prematurely because of your misguided crusade. And all you rest. Are you seriously saying that if you live in Stoke-on-Trent that you want your mayor or MP to ban the ultra-low emission zone and force you to breathe these toxic fumes and die prematurely and, more importantly, kill your own children and grandchildren. Are you crazy? Seriously? Does protecting public health by improving the air quality mean nothing to you or your family as long as you can drive around in your cherished ice car, pouring out pollution? Well, Tesla and Ford have now confirmed that their EVs using LFP batteries use Chinese components or Chinese batteries and therefore will not get any subsidy at all from the 1st of January 2024 in America. Watch out for another price cut from Tesla and a price rise from Ford and the others. But don't hold your breath for a reversal of the numerous battery factories Ford and GM have announced. They've already been put on hold. They grabbed the money fast enough, provided by Joe Biden's IRA, Bet they won't be as quick to restart those projects or perish the thought, hand it back. Well, Volvo looks likely to make car of the year for 2024 with its EX30 in a close battle with the Model Y. Volvo report really strong sales, so they deserve the title if they win. Is anyone else a bit concerned? The world's scientists are now absolutely unanimous on CO2 and exhaust emissions accelerating the rapid rise in global temperatures. Did anyone see this? December in Malaga, Spain at 29.9 centigrade? Well, last year I actually did spend two weeks in Malaga in December. It was warm during the day, but it's nothing like this. Well, in Saudi Arabia they got flash flooding. In the desert. Well, maybe some of you doubters who look at a few articles in Google or YouTube and declare yourself to be an expert and know that climate change is a hoax, you might want to shut up and listen to the experts. I always remember being an officer cadet, learning to march information, and the chief drill instructor singling out Ian Brown, a friend of mine, who was always out of step by asking, do you really believe that you are the only one in step and everyone else is wrong? He followed this with the ultimate put down. Brown, he said, the more I look at you, the more I believe in birth control. 
sir. Well, if you like this video, please click the like button and hit the subscribe for more. Zika, a Chinese EV manufacturer, announces a new battery with much higher energy density that can charge faster. It can recharge 300 miles in 15 minutes. Great! Bring it on. It will happen. But I also know it won't be next year. Battery dwindling along at a cracking pace, and these and other exciting developments are all in the pipeline, but it's a long way from a single hand-built battery in a lab to full-scale economical mass production. Batteries are already now way better than they were five years ago, and they'll be way better still in another five years. Be interesting to see who wins. I bet most of them. Several will win. Well, that's some really brilliant news and a brightening up of my comments section. I do get my fair share of negative, let's say, opposite opinions about EVs, and I always try to suggest that they go and have a drive in one before they spout their utter rubbish. Now, alas, they will. Tesla's just offered a $3,000 or pound incentive to Uber drivers. Any Uber driver buying a Tesla EV and achieving a minimum number of trips before a set deadline will get the money. Uber already has committed to being all EV by 2025, just two years now, so this will convince more of their drivers to buy Tesla. So, in the very near future, all those negative petrol heads and EV deniers will be forced to sit in one whenever they book an Uber and they'll be driven round in a Tesla. Absolutely great. Anyway, all the EV charging networks are furiously installing like it's going out of fashion, but more likely running out of grants. American networks are now looking to cash in on the boom here and in Europe. The more the merrier, as far as I'm concerned. And if a price war erupts, that can only be good for us EV drivers. Just bring it on. Tesla updates its Optimus robot, and it really is improving at a similar pace to its cars. This is amazing. Elon said it would be priced well below the price of their cars, so expect 30k-ish, but probably double that by the time they're launched. And at that price, you have to look at what they can do and compare them to what a human can do. They can probably do far more. Can you lock your fingers into a spanner and tighten up nuts? Plus, it'll work for probably 23 hours a day, no breaks, just one hour for charging. And it'll work weekends. Well, that would replace at least three workers doing eight-hour shifts weekdays, and probably another three more at the weekends. Plus, none of them ever take holidays. One of these is going to be worth about eight workers. And of 15 to £20,000 per worker, each one would be worth a fortune. Now, for those who've just worked out how much... They're going to save, just remember this, each human worker expects to be paid every year. <laughs> Optimus only has to be bought once. So even at 50000 or 100000 it'll pay for itself in a single year and be far more precise and reliable. No sick days, no hangovers, no flirting in the stationary cupboard. What do you think? Leave your comments down below. Are you worried your job might go? Or grateful? Well, the cost savings to factories of Optimus is simply staggering, but it doesn't end there. Imagine a farmer. He buys just one and he teaches it to recognise weeds, then simply sends it out into the fields, permanently. Once every so often, it'll amble back in, plug itself in for a short while, then head back out to the field. But it's going to spend 24, 23 hours a day weeding your fields. Now, come insecticide spraying time, it'll jump in your tractor and spray the crops, same at harvest time. Well, this will transform our society. No more Eastern European migrant workers picking our strawberries. Just get one Optimus, 24 hours a day. How soon will they be here? Well, Tesla does not normally show off a product unless it can make it. Obviously not ramped up yet. I remember a slip recently on an AI Day, AI Day presentation where they said they already had thousands working, doing training, learning and menial tasks. That was almost a year ago. I bet there are thousands already, and they are rapidly increasing the tasks they can cope with. And remember, train just one to do something. With an over-the-air update, they can all do it. Well, this is true Matrix stuff. Remember when Neo gets into the gets those brain injections of martial arts or flying a Huey helicopter, just instant? Maybe sci-fi is now a reality. Well, VW changed their marketing plan again. From, we can take Tesla, last year, to, oops, we can't even make our current EVs competitively. Watch out, VW. See production time slashed and costs slaughtered once Optimus Prime begins making Cybertrucks. Hey, 
just spare a thought for the guys and gals who used to drive the Finnish cars off the Tesla production line every few seconds and park them in the car park, and the guys and gals who drive them from the car park onto the transporters or the trains. Are they watching the development of Optimus and brushing off their CVs? Well, finally, I spend much of my time visiting charges and filming. Recently, I've come across a few where they were commissioned and switched on, only to fail within a matter of days. But catching one in the art of crashing, well, you could look forever and never see that. But recently in Ferrybridge on the M62 and A1M services, we actually had the cameras in our hands for exactly that. We caught the tail end of a blackout on the grid surf chargers, but then they happily obliged by doing it all over again. Total shut down every charger offline, most of them coming back but one refusing to reboot. Now the really strange thing is, this might happen all the time. If we had arrived 10 minutes later, we would not have seen anything apart from one charger out of service and several EV drivers just plugging in again and starting charges. Does this happen all the time? What's your experience? Have you seen a live blackout? We often find failed charges, but seeing them fail, anyone out there? Well, thanks for watching. I'm Dave.